Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Today on Calgary's podcast, I have Jackie Rainforth, who is an international speaker, trainer, author, and consultant uh, specializing in B2B sales, leadership, and business growth based here in Calgary. Thanks for joining us, uh, Jackie. Thank you for having me, Mario. Well, that's a mouthful of what you do, but uh, tell us in a nutshell, uh, you know, uh, what you do and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. Well, I help businesses grow. I, you know, it's about sales. Sales is the fundamental basis of every business. If you don't have sales, you don't have a business and, you know, because you don't have cash flow and you don't have revenue coming in and that's what all businesses need. And so that's what I do. I help businesses grow. Let's uh, ch- chat a little bit about your background. How did you get in, uh, involved in all this? Well, I've always been a top performer in in sales. I started off in sales, and then of course I I became you know the, the typical regional manager, and then grew to executive director in in a you know sales and marketing, and I eventually owned my own. I was founder and CEO of my own um, sales agency, and so I've been both entrepreneur and worked, you know, in the corporate field. So I kind of have a background in everything. I I know what it's like to be in all of those positions. And so when I'm helping clients, it's easy for me to, to understand their perspective. What kind of sales were you in? Uh, Manufacturing. Well, B2B. I've been in the B2B (laughs) business, manufacturing. Uh, So I understand, you know, I've been Kind of in all roles, right? Uh, where I've I've understood. I've worked for a global manufacturer. I've uh, you know I've been basically in in the plumbing industry, but it's wholesale. It's manufacturing. Working with contractors, uh, you know. And I called on designers, architects, engineers, con- contractors, showrooms, luxury. I mean, you you name it. I've I've kind of dealt with all of them. So. Yeah. Now, when when you look at uh, at businesses uh, today, you know, uh, obviously there's there's a lot of ways and places that people get leads or you know connections uh, with things. You know, what does it take though to go from that to an actual sale? Well, I believe that it's it's really about knowing your fundamental sales skills. That's core. I mean, a lot of people wing it and you know when that happens because, yeah. you know, they just go in, they don't know what they're talking about. They just kind of, yeah. I mean, I call it, it depends what, what you're talking about, but I call it the shark and the guppy. You know, these sales guys, or these, these purchasers, the business owners, the people making key decisions, They've been around a long time and they know when people, salespeople come in and they're winging it because they're just not professional. They don't know what they're talking about. They're not following a sales process. You yeah. need a sales process, if, especially today. You're not following a sales process. You don't have a strategy. You're not providing value and solutions. You're just not in the game. And yeah. what's going to happen, and, and this is the important part, as time moves on, as AI, artificial you know, intelligence comes of age, this, you know, the, the guys that are just, you know, the fringe players, the fringe sales guys, they're not going to be required. It's the A-game players that are going to be required because sales is changing. And, you know, I keep saying it, you know, you've got to be on your game. You've got to know the sales skill. You've got to know how to prospect. You've got to know that sales process. And 28% of companies that use sales process and use it well, and their salespeople are trained well, they earn, well, they earn 28% more. That's the key. And, you know. Organizations that earn, you know, twenty eight percent—that's a significant add-on to their bottom line. Yeah. Now, you know, when we <laughs> when we talk about salespeople, you know, there's an impression a lot of people have in their heads, right? The, the used car salesman, you know, the yeah. let's say you know slimy type uh, individual. But uh, you know, is, is that I guess uh, uh, the key as uh, you know from a 
from an individual's perspective of, of being a, a seller of something is that uh, you can't come across as a quote unquote salesman. You know what I mean? Well, you know, selling has changed and it's it's because of the history of selling. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, it all became about the glitz and the glam of, oh, we're going to give you this shiny, you know, whatever. And it was the big pitch and it was the excitement of it. And But there were no warranties. There was no there was no follow up. There was no, you know, people people have been used and abused when it came to selling because they were taken. And that's all changed. We, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess for some people, you know, some industries that's still been there, you know, if we. I won't say timeshare, but, you know, it's, it's, it's still there. There's still people that, you know, are pitching and taking and are being aggressive in their selling. And that's not what we want. There's also that professional sales person out there. And that's what we're going for. No one wants to be had. We've all been, you know, talked to the hand. We don't want to deal with you. Yeah. That's not something we want. And what we're talking about is sales professionalism here. And there is a whole, you know, selling is huge. Every company out there has salespeople. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we're not talking about that level. And and I know a lot of us, you know, we think, oh, selling, that's, you know, that's where we we go to is that yeah. slimy stuff. But it's not. It's about vision and, and giving people vision and telling stories and, and you know, um, it, it's it's just a whole other level. We're not talking about that slimy salesperson yeah. anymore. It's a whole, and that's why process is so important. What what is it that a company should look for in a salesperson? Oh, that's that's a whole other show. <laughs> um, uh, what you're looking for first uh, these days, and what's really changing is network. Are they networked? Because yeah. it's about who you know. That's what's, you know, I keep telling salespeople, you need to have your own database because that's what people are looking for. You yeah. need results. Yeah. You know, are they creating results for the companies that they work for? That's really important because um, it's, you know, do they know how to prospect? That's key. So I've seen people that have been in sales for years and do not know how to prospect. They're still running from it. They're going from job to job to job because they don't know how to prospect. And they, you know, they're still fearful of it or they don't have the skill. And do people have the skill? Do they have the selling skill? Do they know the sales process? You know, the, the processes. More importantly, do they have the right attitude or are they an ego based? You know, people have the right attitude. You can teach them anything. Yeah, and yeah. you know when I had my sales agency, I was taken on a whole uh, you know, company I, I work for. They said, "Oh no, you should, you know, you should take on all these guys from our industry because they've got experience in the industry." Yeah. Well, yeah. that was not a great thing to do. They had they had experience, but they also had a lot of baggage. I took on salespeople that had the right. They didn't have a lot of experience, but they had the right attitude, and we all know that attitude is everything. You can yeah. teach people the right way to sell. And that's what I did. And, you know, we ended up becoming the top in the industry within four years, like selling mm. millions and millions of, you know, 280% increase in four years. So that that tells you we're talking tens and tens of millions of dollars. So that tells you a lot. So I'm curious, uh, in terms of a salesperson, uh, how important is it that uh, the the person is liked i guess if i'm if i'm a salesperson going to to you as a company to sell you something uh do do i do, does the people there really have to like me as a person does that have to shine through in some way absolutely of course people have to like you it's about rapport and relationships they have to like you they have to know you like you and trust you mm-hmm. um, trust being the most important yeah. right because if they don't trust you, they're not going to buy from you, particularly from women. Women have to like you. And men are more utilitarian in terms of purchasing. If they want the object, they're just going to buy it if it if it fits their needs. But women in particular, you know, in particular, have to like you or they're not going to buy from you. Um, men, if they trust you, you know, they don't necessarily have to like you, but they need to trust you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's all about rapport and relationships. Absolutely. 
And, you know, it's, yeah, it's very, very important. And these days, particularly, when you look at, you know, my post the other day, I post daily on LinkedIn and, you know, have a ton of followers because they're always looking for what's new and exciting, what's happening, what are the trends that are going on in, in, in selling today. One of the big things that's happening is that with the explosion of technology, you know, we're losing that ability to create relationships, to create, you know, our social or emotional intelligence skills are dropping like flies, especially, and I, I don't want to, you know, generalize, but the younger generation, yeah. all their relationships are based on technology, yeah. texting, Snapchat, TikTok. This, right? <laughs> yeah, it's all about that. And so the Fortune 500 companies, the top companies, they're all looking for an advancement in emotional intelligence skills, you know, self-regulation, uh, empathy, communication skills, all of those things that really matter in terms of building rapport and relationship because we're losing that ability to build relationships. So, yeah, mm -hmm. being liked is is important. They yeah. need to know you, like you, and trust you. Absolutely. Yeah. On the flip side of the technology thing, and, and you mentioned, the, you know, uh, your use of social media and LinkedIn uh, specifically, how important is that uh, for companies to, to utilize and uh, take advantage of the social media that's out there? Oh, social selling and AI are huge. So I'm top 500 on LinkedIn. And in there, I have a social selling index of top 1%. So I started using LinkedIn years ago and started posting, you know, daily tips probably five years ago before it became a big thing. And it's huge. Every social selling is the new cold calling. And AI yep. now has just loaded that. Everybody is, you know, trying to figure out how do we do this? Because especially with COVID and people being remote working, you know, people aren't, it's not, you know, we're not going door to door like we used to and just, yeah. you know, calling on offices like we used to or yeah. dropping in. And it really is about expanding the visibility, expanding the reach. And that is done through social selling. And AI has exploded that even further because the vis visibility and reach that you get through AI, it has, oh, it has just blown up. And yeah. I don't know if you've yeah. noticed these days, but your inbox and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, right? It's, it's, it's almost too much. So yeah. how, you know, I've got companies contacting me and saying, how do we, how do we do this? How do, how, how do we, how do we do this, Jackie? And, and so I'm helping companies digitally transform their businesses and start social selling so that they can do it themselves. Yeah. And that's what my blog or that's what my post was about today. How do you do it? Like, because AI makes it affordable and you can do it yourself, which is awesome. Yeah. But how do you stand out? How do you do it? You know, I used to pay a fortune to get people to do lead gen for me in a, you know, in a way that was kind of, you know, it was, it was one function of AI. Yeah. But how do you do it? How do you set it up where you've got all these multiple funnels coming in so that mm. you can generate more leads, you can bring in more customers, you can find these customers because it, it, they're not just down the street anymore. You know, they're you know, everywhere. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, you, you mentioned your inbox. So it's, 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 <laughs> the one thing oh. that drives me crazy is uh, every single day my inbox is filled with these people uh, from all over the world, Mumbai, Pakistan, wh whatever, UK, about how they can help you grow your digital presence. And I go, oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> oh, they, oh they have capitalized on it massively, yeah. for sure, for yeah. sure. But yeah. it's also expanded the market, right? Exactly. Your yeah. global reach. So, like, for me, I can now in Malaysia, in Pakistan, in India, in, you know, English speaking countries where I never had access before. Yeah. So that's what's made it terrific for me. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, there's pros and cons, but how do you stand out now? Yeah. I know that, you know, when I had, when I was paying thousands and thousands of dollars 
for a company to do that just not even a year ago, two years ago, maybe. No, it was about a year ago. I was getting leads like crazy every month coming in. Now it doesn't happen like that because the market is flooded. Yeah. And yeah. people aren't responding. And even LinkedIn, it's flooded. Right. So it needs more. And, you know, one of the, the posts that I put through the other day, you need to zig when people are zagging, right? You need to pick up that phone because the phone is becoming much, much more important now. Interesting. When other people are just sending out the email, sending out the email, guess what? That phone is really, really important. Excellent. Really important. So yeah. Many, so many LinkedIn followers do you have? Uh, over 20,000. Okay. <laughs> I wish me. I had more. I wish I had more. Tell me why you've uh, you focused on LinkedIn as, uh, say, as opposed to any other social media platforms. Oh, well, first of all, they get over a million new subscribers a month. They have uh, the average family income is over $150,000. And it's business based. Yeah. Eighty six percent of e decision makers are following on LinkedIn when they make their their business decisions based on what they see mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. So they they don't the key decision makers they're following, they're watching, they're yeah. reading, yeah. they're listening. They're not engaging as much right like they're not really they're not out there they're not like oh hey hey and and playing on it but they're on there and they're yeah. watching yeah and they're making their decisions based on what's out there so anyone that's in sales needs to be on and i i keep you know anyone yeah. that follows me knows and i keep giving them you need to be a go-to industry expert you need to be branding there are four, you know, there's four key things that you need to be doing in social selling. And I keep, you know, putting it out there, putting it out there. And I give tons of value on yeah. how do you do it? What should you be doing? How do you get out there? And uh, I give lots of free, free stuff on what you should be doing. And, and that's what I do because you need to be out there. So, uh, I, you know, in this day and age, is it rare for you to come across a CEO or, or a president of a company that isn't on LinkedIn? Very rare. I mean, sometimes, you know, let's face it. Time is the is the time is the big issue these days. Yeah. When you yeah. look at, you know, especially for CEOs, they're busy. They are busy, busy people. And even, you know, even when people are ghosting you. Um, I, I often say to the salespeople, if they're ghosting you, a lot of times, you know, I've got like eight steps in my book on, you know, messages you can do. But a lot of times I'll say, just say, listen, if you're busy, I don't know if you're busy or I don't know if you're not interested. If you're not interested, just say, just write back and say, no, no. <laughs> I'm, you know, not interested. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're busy, just say, hey busy right like one simple word that's all i need to know and and they do they will respond and they will let you know they'll just yep. say yep. busy or no and and or, or you know they'll they will let you know oftentimes and it's not that they're they're just busy people are busy it's the one thing and one of the classes that i teach a lot of is time management time management mm. Sales people are only spending, it's getting worse. It's it was 37% or 39% or something. That's how much time they spend actually out in the field selling. It's down to 28%. Hmm. 28% of their time is spent selling out of because they're weak. Like it's terrible because they're so busy doing other things, researching and filling out sales reports. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just it's you know, time is the biggest factor that we worry about these days. And for for CEOs and stuff, CEOs that they're out there, they're listening, they're watching because that's where everything is happening. It's social yeah. selling. Yeah. Everything is happening online on, on LinkedIn. That's where it's all happening. Wow. So you're obviously quite busy uh, in, in everything you do. What I, 
I could always be busier. Are you kidding? I can always be busier. But what do you do? Uh, you know, everybody talks uh, these days about quote unquote work life balance, etc. Uh, what do you do for that? Uh, like, how do you uh, relax, uh, de stress? Uh, any hobbies or interests out there? Um, I get up at four thirty or five in the morning, and I work early. And um, I I travel. I tend to travel. That's my thing. I do take breaks and I travel. That is, uh, like I said, I just got back. <laughs> so uh, traveling is my thing. Uh, I do like to read, but I do read business books. And um, my husband just bought me an electric bike. Oh. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. We have electric bikes. So we're going to go biking. Oh, that's and cool. Yeah, and I golf. That's yeah. We we like to golf. So mm -hmm. you know, I'm curious in terms of the the books you read. Uh, the, the came to mind a, a question: Who do you think in, influenced you in, in your career uh, uh, over the years? Uh, in, in terms of I don't know, maybe role models or uh, that were out there, whether uh, you know a, a real life personality or or somebody um, like that was in the business world who influenced uh, you? Um, two people influenced me in a big, big way. Both were sales leaders of mine. Uh, Ron Bryant, from when I worked at Ames Brothers Ceramic Tile, he uh, he always he he taught me how to look for opportunities outside of the box. Mm. So I worked in construction, right, for a manufacturer, and he always taught me, you know, as you're driving by and you see a sign, it's a construction sign, you follow it up, look for it, keep looking. And take the information down. Just always be looking outside of the box. And yep. he taught me that. So that's something I always have done. It's always looking outside of the box. Be creative. Try and find, you know, there's always opportunities out there. So look for them. Don't yep. wait for opportunities to come for you, to you. You look outside the box. So that was one of the big lessons I learned from him. And the other was Pat Adams when I worked for IXL Brick. And he always, he taught me to always give your people the tools to get the job done and just let them go. Mm. Don't micromanage them. Just give them the, give them the tools. And he also taught me to be creative. And uh, he did some amazing, amazing things. And trust your people. Trust your people. Yeah. Listen to them. He he listened to me. I had some crazy ideas and he listened to me and they turned out to be record breaking, you know, and and but he trusted me. And um and I the two people in my life that were just amazing and they trusted me. And that's huge. You have to have trust with trust your employees, trust your leaders and you know, it's a, it's about trust and creativity and and being able to just think outside the box, I think for both of them were yeah. were just huge. And of course, Dale Carnegie. <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> right? why Dale Always Carnegie. Dale Carnegie. Yeah, kind of the yeah. uh, the Bible, so to speak. Right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, how do we friends and influence has, people? Yeah. How? How? Uh, who hasn't read that one book? Right? <laughs> oh, so many times. So yeah. many times. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ask people lots of questions. Some keep speaking, right? Let them keep speaking about themselves. People want to, yeah. right? Yeah. People the, the always talk gift. about themselves mostly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Super. Well, thanks uh, very much, Jackie, for joining us today. Oh, well, thank you, Maura, for having me. And uh, congratulations on this fabulous podcast. I'm so excited. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Just a pleasure. Just a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. That was Jackie Rainforth, our guest today on Calgary's podcast. She's an international speaker, trainer, author, and consultant specializing in B2B sales, leadership, and business growth. I'm Mario Tanaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast. Thanks for joining us today.